Why do some men have such a hard time with male patterned baldness? Hair loss. I just can't take it anymore. It's brutal. Oh! No way I'm going bald, bro! Probably 19! I see my hair thinning. I see more and more of my hairs falling out in the shower. As we uncover this mystery, we'll also reveal the secrets of bald men who have found the life-changing key to acceptance. For some, male pattern baldness can have a devastating psychological and social effect, often taking the form of a dissolution of identity or feelings of less than conventional attractiveness. Moreover, it is a mostly genetically imposed occurrence that is directly associated with aging and a loss of vitality, which happens so gradually that most men don't even realize until it's almost too late. This study by Alfonso and colleagues shows the percentage of men that believe that hair loss affects self-image, self-esteem, dateability, and depression. If you fall into any of those columns, the advice at the end of the video will help. And given these stats, plus the fact that the decade thresholds of age are almost directly tied with the percentage of men that experience baldness, you would imagine that at least 50 to 70% of men would be seeking hair regrowth therapy, right? In fact, less than 10% of men will ever seek hair transplant or other hair regrowth therapies, with some figures as low as 1 in 13 men or 7.7%. But why is this number so low? I think I can sum it up in four eloquent words. That shit is scary. <laughs> In all seriousness, for some men, hair transplant is absolutely the best option, especially for those of you that are having a hard time making the bald look work. But to understand this statistical hesitation, here's an approximate price tag for a hair transplant of 2,000 to 4,000 grafts, plus the yearly cost for a lifelong post-transplant finasteride, and plus 32 to 40 percent of people might also need a second transplant of 1,000 to 3,500 grafts. So, needless to say, some men see how inaccessible and daunting these treatments are as their biological time clock ticks onwards, and compounded with the biological stress of time, hair loss can also be incredibly, incredibly sneaky. It's quite a common occurrence for a 17 to 19 year old to develop an initial mature hairline, which can move the hairline up about an inch or more, at a point in biological age that many believe life has just begun. Let that sink in. And then in the following couple of years, as they attempt to discover themselves, their careers, and their place in the world, they unfortunately fall into that 20 to 25% of men that start to go bald in their 20s, which by society standards ages them by about 10 to 15 years. Well, that's not fair. Why has this been imposed on me so early? Thoughts like this will often come up when hair loss becomes apparent, and it just adds coal to the fire of overwhelm that many men feel the heat of already, adding just one more thing, among many other things in their lives, that makes them feel trapped. Trapped about A, something they didn't ask for, B, something they likely feel like they don't deserve, and C, something they feel like they need to fix in order to fit into the conventional archetype of male attractiveness, especially if they're not in a long-term relationship already. Here's an uncomfortable truth bomb. Ask any man who's struggling in life to physically act out and with body language accurately represent what he's going through day to day, and this is what he'll likely do. He may curl up on the floor while grabbing the knees, he may mimic the bars of a jail, he may grab his face and sink into himself, or just tense up violently until his face turns red and the muscles cramp. Above all things, hair loss is just one more thing that makes men feel overwhelmed, trapped, and small. And many will try to figure out what they want to do about their hair loss in a very stressful state, and they'll do it by thinking and thinking and researching until the cows come home. But this often leads to paralysis by analysis, making it actually more difficult to pull the trigger on any kind of action. That paralysis paired with these price tags and paired with the uncertainty of whether a fully shaved head will even work for them aesthetically leads to that statistic of only 7.7% .7 of men seeking hair transplant and to the fact that most young men with thinning hair have a hard time taking full action. They may take half action, applying something like hair fiber spray to cover the thinness or perhaps rosemary or peppermint oil to promote circulation, but they may feel unable to fully relinquish or override because those options are very, very vulnerable. And they're very vulnerable because of what we believe that society will say. Shave your head? You've given up on yourself. Apply regrowth topicals? That's so feminine. Get a hair system slash toupee? You're lying to yourself and you look ridiculous. 
Get a transplant? You're insecure and fragile. Wear thinning hair for life? You're unattractive. So here is the golden key, regardless of which of these options you choose. For those of you that are less emotionally affected by hair loss, you might just be here for educational purposes, but you might still be struggling as to what to do about it. The key is simple. You will highly want to avoid what I mentioned just previously, and that is being in a highly stressful and activated state while trying to make a decision. This will inherently cause analysis paralysis, and what you actually want to be doing is reducing your noradrenergic transmission by managing stress, fatigue, and sleep with a healthy lifestyle and good social relationships. And that may seem too platitude-based, but it's absolutely based in psychology and science. You want to find things that bring you to absolute calm. And when you bring yourself to absolute calm, you'll be able to think straight. It'll also be helpful to you to learn how to detach yourself from what you believe your balding means. Take long walks, smell the roses, stop cluster researching and then taking massive amounts of conflicting information, which will just paralyze you further, and then make your decision. Because by then, you will just know what is right for you. Now, if you just listen to that and you're like, hey, Cass from Aberlite, I don't think I have the capacity to do that, frankly. Or I just listened to that and I'm already doing that and it's not really helping. Or even I need to make that decision as to what to do with my hair loss first and then I can rest and then I can quiet my mind and breathe my sigh of relief. Then you most very much likely fall into the more severe category where hair loss is giving you feelings of severe depression, self-harm, potential loss of self, and you feel utterly, utterly paralyzed. The immediate reaction to this should be psychotherapy with the goal to reignite self-esteem or build up self-esteem that wasn't there to begin with. And that's not a dig at you whatsoever if you are indeed young and you tied any amount of identity to your hair growing up and maybe even had a little bit of a rougher childhood. These things compile on top of each other and can lead to a really, really bad mess where that piece of identity starts to fade away and you're so young, you're just getting into life. It could be very, very confusing. And this is a bleak scenario that often takes two, you and someone else to help you redirect emotions and recontextualize your perception of the world. And I promise thinking about this alone will only paralyze you further. And I think psychiatrist and therapist Dr. K says it best here. The problem is until we start questioning our perception, then the cycle of depression will continue because the inputs we're getting that are making us depressed are not actually accurate. They are distorted in some way. And since they're distorted, we see the world in a negative light. Then we draw conclusions about the world. Our mind loves to overgeneralize. Then we draw conclusions about ourselves. And then once we believe that we are not good, then all kinds of problems will arise. So the question is, how do you short circuit this? The way you short circuit it is by actually training your perception. And trying to train your perception, especially in a nihilistic state, is going to be incredibly difficult. You're going to be in a echo chamber of your own thoughts, and especially if you have the same thoughts recurring. Every five thoughts is about how insecure you feel about whether or whether or not you have a tuft of hair on top of your head, and that makes the difference between confidence and despair. And perhaps to you, it might sound silly to seek psychological help for hair loss alone, but ultimately that's not why you would be seeking psychological help, because you will be viewing it for what it actually represents in your life. Yet another burden that makes you feel trapped in a world that you believe is putting you in a box. And that box or perceived societal bracket can be different for everyone, but the absolute worst way to go about doing this, which I see a lot of men doing, they kind of just view this state of low self-esteem as kind of like a quirky thing. You know, I view myself poorly. This is my personality now, and I'm going to ruminate. I'll, I might vent to close friends, but ultimately those friends, although they're really, really nice people, uh, they're not adequately equipped to help whatsoever. In fact, they're very much more likely to hurt the situation, even though they're very nice people, they are not equipped to help you. I've only made a few bald head videos on this platform and I've already seen a very concerning amount of comments of very, very nihilistic and self-harm related comments to do with hair loss. So I hope you guys are taking this very, very seriously and not just playing it off. Oh, look how quirky I am. No, no, no. It's very, very serious. I hope you are getting help and I hope you are doing it properly and quickly.